but I think it's been quite uh, I think it's time to introduce our host for tonight. So first, I will start with the Andrew McFadden Ketchum, the one, the only, the iconic. What else would you say? What else could you say? We have Charles Eric Disheveled, a dad, a poet, wine connoisseur, and a pirate just for tonight. That is just for tonight. <laughs> and then we have the Karen, a bad indie mama. Because we're the only ones that 
thing to do. Um, so I want to send good vibes to Robin of April Blooming Press. Uh, she uh, is uh, pretty sick, and she was going to be here today to do some paper dust at April Blooming. was going to be here as well, um, and you could watch some of their books. They're the only small poetry press in Nashville. Uh, so let's uh, do some healing fingers. How about that? Some healing fingers for for uh, them, and also to Angela of Whiskey and Sticks. They are our cigar uh, partner. No kidding. Uh, if you come here next time, you can learn about cigars. Uh, and our last party the day before Halloween, which is going to be boom thing. We're going to have one of those famous poets in the world here. Yeah. Uh, we are actually going to have people from the kids six rolling cigars for you in the lobby. Okay. So, uh, but let's give Angela uh, some healing fingers as well. Okay. So, all right. We've gone through our, our, our the only partners we haven't mentioned is the Last Chance Liquors. Okay. So at the end of this party, we're going to give. Caitlin, a uh, 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 gift certificate from Last Chance Liquors. They're the second liquor store ever to be uh, 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 built in Nashville, to be opened in Nashville. You don't have to, to drink anything. You can just give, you can give it to me. <laughs> um, another partner of ours, Garden Family Delivery, is not here, uh, but that's okay. Um, and last but not least, Rock Hill Writers Colony is another one of our partners. So, I know it's a lot of like talking. We're almost done. Let's give all those partners a round of applause. And I tell you, I'm going to have to go to the party to the party. It's not going to happen. Okay, so listen, we have some cameras. We are not live. We've received complaints about the live, so we cut it, even though I'm sort of annoyed about it. Okay, you guys don't want to be live? It's fine. <laughs> You're not live. But listen, uh, we have cameras that are recording because we have to have good media for this because we have to get that for money and things and grants and blah 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 because we want to display all the wonderful artists and their beauty and their abilities. Um, so they're right there, right there. Don't worry, just walk right through here. No big deal. Nobody cares. Um, if you want to avoid the camera or something, just you know, go to the bar, just go out that. Okay, super easy. All right. Um, last but not least, what is the point of a party? to get to know people you don't know, all right? And I'm looking right now at a lot of people who do not know each other, all right? Because that includes me. I don't know, 90% of you beautiful human beings, okay? So, what we want you to do is while we're doing our thing up here and entertaining you, turn to the person next to you and say, I heard you drove all the way from North Carolina. What are you thinking? This guy right here, drove all the way from North Carolina, all right? It's okay to be a little loud. It's okay to, you know, if, 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 if people are like, shh, you can shush them right back, okay? All right, so make some friends. All right, last but not least, Eric, Michelle, Charles, give them a round of applause. Hey, hey, hey. So, uh, welcome, welcome. Grab a drink, meet somebody new, all of those fun things. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the themes that we do here. Uh, and for the most part, they are totally random. So last month I was like, wouldn't it be great if everyone <laughs> wore a lei and they had Hawaiian party favors? That had zero to do with our featured, our dubious guest of honor, okay? So sometimes it's like that, but tonight it was more intentional, right? So I had the enjoyment of reading Caitlin Lee's book last month, Meditation for Party Girls, and I came across a section in it which gave me the idea for our current theme. Okay. And being that I'm in my mid-40s, I can't read this right now, so I'm going to do this thing, work, please work, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's great, I love that, this is always the case, okay, so I was reading her book, and um, we'll get to her interview later and, and ask her some questions, but I'm just gonna jump right in. That brother, that safe and strong and older and wiser and richer and most powerful brother of mine lives in a crow's nest in my head. <laughs> if you're rusty on your ship terminology, a crow's nest is the lookout point high up on the ma main mast of the ship where my pirate brother, with all his hunting for gold, scans the horizon with a spyglass and studies the unobstructed sky me sighting land or judging a reef too risky to drop the anchor by. And what am I doing? Swimming in the shallows, looking for clear turquoise water to dive through. A bit afraid every time my feet drift off the sand. But when the enemies come, I fire the cannons. Mm. I steer the ship. 
I am the captain. And I read that. Woo! And I took a moment. And I was like, we're going to be pirates. We <laughs> are here. And this parrot is real. And it doesn't like to be bothered. Oh, oh, oh no! Put your body! Put your body! It's fine! It's fine! It's fine! So, I just wanted to say about that. So, uh, there's some there's some fun thought going to speak to you before you come here. Anyways, I feel like I'm talking too much. Yep. And I want to hear the beautiful words of Caitlin D. So, let's get her up here uh, to, to read something beautiful from the book. Let's go for the book. <laughs> I'm Brittany, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. If you haven't read Brittany's autobiography, it's probably devastating. Um, mine is less so, but it is also real. It's also a real thing. It's called Meditation for Party Girls, that was a little passage. So I uh, have been an avid journaler since I was like eight years old. And my pile of journals got pretty excessive and at some point I left my hometown, Los Angeles, and moved down to Mexico um, in a total midlife crisis sort of situation and I had all these fucking journals and I used to just have so many I would burn them. So a lot of them were gone but I had like stacks and stacks left and I was like there's probably something in here I want to keep. And so when I was down in Mexico my business was failing. I left everyone and everything I knew. I wasn't as good at Spanish as I, you know, tourist Spanish was great, citizen Spanish not so much. Um, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And so I just started transcribing all my old journals just because I was kind of nomadic and um, I needed to get them off. I needed to make room in my car. So I started transcribing these journals and I actually found some stuff that I was like, this isn't that bad. Um, so I ended up submitting an excerpt, which I'm going to read the first excerpt that I submitted to my publisher, who ultimately became my editor, the publisher of my book, Jonathan Blake Foster, who's also an amazing writer. He has a small press called Green Boy Book Club. I highly recommend checking it out if you're a writer and um, he loves publishing first time poets and writers, so um, check them out. He's accepting submissions all the time. So this was part of an online zine, and this is when I was living in San Pancho, which is a small like surf town about an hour north of Puerto Vallarta, the central west coast of Mexico. All right. It's a lot of preamble. Um, yeah. This one's called Brown Sand. June 18, 2022, San Pancho, Nayarit, Mexico. San Pancho has brown sand, beach breaks, barefoot surfers, and one main road through town. We live in a house that's under construction. Our living room is upstairs, and the house is built down the hill. The living room doors don't close. We moved in in June, so the giant hawks come in and out with the rains. And Prince, Prince is my cat, he comes up a lot. And he's Prince Charming, not made up yet. Prince hunts them, they're the size of sparrows. Once a bat flew in, and I never saw it leave, so sometimes I joke that it still lives in the guest room. In LA, I was a highly charged, angry, loud, obnoxious girl with cool guitars that would sort of play them. I woke up to the sounds of red tails spilling their soft cries over the hills and LAPD helicopters tending to hospital rooms like, like bees gathering nectar. And here I wake up, mostly a prince biting my head, ready to hunt, and needing me to witness his prowess in the dawning morning light. I spoil him by dragging myself out of bed, but I like to know, or I like that he knows when to wake up, just before dawn, to catch the last concentrated magic of the night. I like to keep no sleep to myself. There are chambers in my mind that I haven't had the chance to walk through, and it's comfortable to do it someplace warm where my currency can go far. Economics and commerce, country lines, pink clouds gather up the mist from the tropics and set off sailing over the ocean to drizzle it along the horizon line. I go to town, I drink coffee, I watch the waves, I try the venoms that Mexico has an outlawed. Cobras, toads, scorpions, plants with spikes, and men with charming smiles who speak so little English that my Spanish finally starts improving. I buy peyote and a tincture for microdosing at a store in Sayulita. 
those canvas walls and a narrowly curated selection of hand-printed vintage tees, restored leather boots with custom painting and stitching, jewelry that looks like treasure hauled to shore from a sunken ship, fine perfumes, and handmade pure cotton matching sets and potato sack dresses. I meet a man who grew up here who is sick of healing in the way that an, an, an American can be sick of war, or a child with church door can be sick of religion. He prefers science for the same reason that I prefer magic. We both prefer the truth. I'm relearning my body, how I exist in my body, and how my body is neither completely connected nor completely disconnected from any other aspect of physical and consciously charged realms surrounding me. I meditate and gather wind. I empty my hands of the spoiled light. My shoulder aches, and I eat lots of meat and watch birds. I don't want to think about love. A man on the street is loading catering contents into a white truck under the white stone arches. Silver coffee carafes, a morning party. The night before my mom died, Juno was only three or something very small. They colored a beautiful bouquet of flowers and inscribed text that was something about, there's going to be a party tonight. She kept saying, there's going to be a party tonight. And sometimes I wonder if they're talking about ancestors and angels gathering to comfort my mom during her last hours on earth. I don't want to be sentimental today. I want to look to the future, forward, over the horizon line. I want myself to be limitless. My spirit will dissolve into the dark when my time comes, and everything will be all right. I dreamt of washers and dryers. I was living somewhere and had to make sure everything was clean all the time. I'm trying to have a washer and dryer set taken off the property to make space for the new ones, but I wasn't sure if I would have the energy and resources to pull it off in one day. It was a boring, heavy, mundane, orangish energy. I saw my old drummer, and she was dressed like a 90s office worker, gray banana republic type thing, but she was wearing shorts, which I thought was fun. But they didn't look right with her blazer. Her hair was very neat, and she had bangs. I wanted to talk to her, but she still avoided me. I felt like I should have grown up more. I was only thinking about going surfing, and she had real responsibilities. I didn't envy her, though. A yellow jay, great, a great piscity, catches a big lizard and flies off the ledge by my window. A sorry day for the lizard. The brackles line up in a triangular formation of the palms, keeping watch over precious eggs nestled in among the budding coconuts. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, I have so much. <laughs> um, yeah. This is it. Um, and so we put together a deal, and uh, I forced him to give me a deadline because I was like, this is never going to fucking happen. We don't have a date six, nine months from now. So I just started going through, and I mean, one nice thing about going through my old journals is so much of it is just fucking nonsense or just like, the same miserable complaining about my life, and it's just like, it's awful, but then every once in a while there will be a cool poem, or there will be observations, or a story, or something that happened to me. So it was like, easy to kind of curate and take out those parts that were just like, I don't know, if my alarm bells went off, and then he was editing for me all the time. Um, but as far as like, my format, I mean, I write just because it's like, um, it's like waking up every day, you know, it's like I don't know how to have a personality or thoughts in my head if I don't write them down first, that's kind of always how it's been, and um, I was a songwriter for many years, I was a screenwriting major, I was trying to write, so I'm like back to sort of having a little more organization of my thoughts, but you know, as the title suggests, I didn't really have my shit together for a good portion of the time, I was like, Splitting my time between like doing deep healing inquiry and getting absolutely shit faced all the time, mm. and I was stoned for 20 years. So there was like um, one hell of a job. Yeah, there was. <laughs> 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 it was it, but, um, loved it, miss it. Uh, but I am kind of into having some thought coherence at this point, I'm trying to write things that make a little more sense than this book. So it probably. One, one cool thing about this book that someone has pointed out to me that also like scared the shit out of me was like, I will never be able to write in my journal again without being like, is this anything, you know? Like, because so much of what's in here was purely just me being like, me and me. I, would, I had no plans to publish that stuff. That was just a conversation with myself, with my higher power or whatever. Um, so the eclecticism is in spite of myself. It's not how I want to write, it's just how I have to read the uh, the bio on the back of the book. Okay. This might be the most incredible bio of all time. We, you know, here at the National Culture Party, we believe in extraordinarily low light. And Caitlin D is an intuitive healing artist who incorporates plant and animal medicines dream work and tarot into her pragmatic and accessible spiritual practices. She trained in yoga at the Mount Madonna Center in Northern California with Baba Haridas, okay, and has taught in juvenile halls, residential facilities, and undersearched schools in the LA area. She learned to astral project from, from an alien named Jack at age four. There's four letters in the word Jack in the village for us. She has fronted several punk rock bands uh, and rock bands and released five albums. Um, the next book I publish, if I publish one, I'm going to completely make up a bio that sounds kind of more like this. Um, it's all true. What's fascinating to me uh, when so when Matt Johnstone, uh, the pre-national poetry, uh, poetry library, excuse me. Um, suggested you, uh, what, and I started to look into what you do, what amazed me was that your bio and your work in this book are equally eclectic, you know? And I started to think, it started to make, it made me think about mixed media art. Um, like, it, this is gonna sound like I'm, it's a little, I don't know, it must be like Pablo Picasso. I mean, he was this, did you know, I looked into this today, because I was like, Pablo, because I'm not gonna, he, he was a stage artist, like he, he made stage uh, uh, for, for actors, like the stage, you know, come on, help me out with somebody. Set design. Set design. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, I was like, really? I mean, the guy's doing ceramics, he's doing paintings, he's doing sculpture, he's doing set design? Um, how do you find time for all of this? I mean, in the midst of all this, you're also like, I'm shit-faced half the time. I mean, how do you find time to to cultivate all these different interests and also to spin the web of, of this book that, that represents all these interests? Um, oh man. I I mean, I'm, I work in the service industry now. I was in the healing arts industry for a long time and that was 
you know, uh, like private practice I had in LA. LA was tough because it's like, it used to be a pretty inexpensive big city and then the last 10 years, there's already been a bunch of people from LA yeah. in other parts of the country now. Um, Cause you know, we also couldn't afford to live there. So I, you know, I just, I don't know. It, Artists, I wish so fucking bad I had one thing that I got up every day and I was like, this is it, this yeah. is my calling, because then maybe I would have, you know, a bunch of money by now. Um, but I like waiting tables and, you know, I, I feel like I'm always working because, you know, if you're an artist, your work is never done, you're always you're like, like so yeah, you just, the bar is always rising. Because you're like, cool, I did that, I learned this new thing, and now I'm like, there's another impulse, another urge. Um, learning to like, I mean, smoking weed was, I'm sure there's some fans in here um, of weed, but you know, it's pretty easy to be creative. <laughs> like, it's just you can kind of do stuff. Am I correct in understanding that you don't smoke the weed? I don't know. I've been sober for over a year now, and I'm like super happy, but it is a lot harder for me to connect with the creative process. I have to get up super fucking early. To be like in an altered state of consciousness. And I'm not like advocating everyone to like be sober so they, like if you can do coherent artistry and live your life and whatever and get ways it power to you. Um but yeah for me I I like I I just I have a friend, she's like one of my best friends. I call her with my identity crisis like every two weeks, you know, and I'm just like, should I do this for a living? Is this who I really am? And I remember like just being so upset at one point because I'm like almost 40, you know, and she, I was like, when am I going to figure out like who the fuck I am when I'm supposed to be doing? She's like, I kind of think your identity is just like not having an identity. <laughs> I was like, that is the most frustrating shit. You're like, yeah. 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 But that's, I mean, she's like a very spiritual person, and she sees that as like, and my therapist says the same thing. She's like, you know, and like Jungian archetypes and archetypal, like if you're if you're picturing like the artist, the artist is someone who doesn't have an identity because you are just a channel for like whatever is moving through you. And so I'm trying really hard right now in my life to get out of my like Virgo moon bullshit critical like. Every, yeah. If I'm not succeeding and like cap yeah. and like like making money from something, why it's not worth it? You know, I I can't possibly be bothered to spend time on it. And that's not even how like really people who successful for years get to where they are anyway. They're just in it. They're open. And so I'm really trying to just like shut the fuck up. Apparently, shut the fuck up, Velasco Lorca. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's our interview. This is Velasco Lorca, and it, he he keeps us on time. Okay, so. Uh, this yes. is yours. Take this it away. Mine. Yes. Um, thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so here at National Television Party, um, we sometimes put on skits, right? Uh, because what's a good poetry reading without a skit? <laughs> I don't know, but that's what we do, uh, evidently. So, um, we give our uh, dubious poet of honor a list before he or she or they come on. And they get to choose like what they're going to do, right? So I'm not sure if Kate would be checked like the Shakespeare box or not. Come back. Uh, we're, 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 we're gonna be what are you doing? Uh, oh, but God. anyways, that's kind of what we're doing. So but we also need some audience participation here. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to read a soliloquy or anything. That, so you can relax. Even though some of you apparently want to. Um, okay, so we are going to perform for you uh, Hamlet's "To Be or Not to Be," but I've cut it into four parts. Okay, and I need someone from the audience to uh, judge. You know who does the the most spirited performance, right? <laughs> or, like I'm not saying the best. Like, I mean, what is that going to be, right? But the most spirited performance. Uh, for your efforts, right, you will get one of these parrots. The broken one. <laughs> the broken one. That, that, I'll take that one. But uh, like a, a fully functioning parrot will be yours, okay? Um, and then the winner 
will also get uh, a fully functioning parrot with both legs. Okay? So we're going to draw our parts, right? One person's going to go, and then the next person's just going to hopefully just like pick up, like, you know, like a true stage actor would, right? So um, my poet performers, um, come, come over here, please. All right. Uh, who's going to be our uh, our judge? She's like she's like jumping out of her seat. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. You dropped again. Dropped again. All four. Okay. All right. So ladies get to draw first. I really want to kiss you right now. <laughs> That'd be weird. That'd be weird. Come on, I don't know. Yeah, I really want to kiss you too. Hey. Do it. <laughs> All right. I'm actually feeling really disappointed. You, you get more points right, if you so kiss him. Alright. Okay. Alright. He just told you how to rip the system. Oh. Okay. Alright, so our one person. All right, then our two person goes, our three person, and our four person, all right? So, um, you know, whoever wants to get the, the party started, I want to make sure that I can actually read this first. Yeah, okay, okay, but there's a sense my life. Okay. We can, uh, we can walk around too. So who's, who's, who's got the oh, first okay. line? Oh, okay. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing in them, to die to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a conciliation. Devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the love. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us a call. There's the respect. That makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pangs of, of disprized love, the lost delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that parent, patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might as quiet as me with a bare bodkin. Who would quarrels bear to run and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, <laughs> puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others we know not of. And thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with a pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great hint and moment in this regard, their occurrence can arrive to lose the name of action. Blase couldn't give a shit, Hamlet. <laughs> but it was most spirited, so I gotta go with you. <laughs> 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 so, so, so when we were playing this, uh, we're at my house, and we did not tell Karen and Caitlin anything about it, so they had like no rehearsal at all. So it's a little unfair. But listen to this. Um, Aaron slash Mr. Charles here is actually an actor. Yeah. 
who acted in LA for many years. Yeah, he was and when, we were, when we were talking about it, he was like, okay, so I'm gonna perform a little bit. And he launched into it, and I almost cried. It was so fucking good. Give him another round of applause.
Washington, I'm telling you, for real. I'm telling you, for real. I told her earlier. I told her earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This was not what Zeus intended, and he's 
for revenge on Prometheus and his human friends. Um, still, he has made his choice and had to stick with it. The biblical Yahweh made the same choice and so received only the fat and guts of sacrificial animals while the priests ate the rest. Um, I think that's, I think it's really like speaking to how uh, Prometheus is like a life giver, right? And he kind of made this sacrifice for us and kind of made fun of the gods, like, to give us this fire and this life. And it's kind of wonderful how women can do that too. Um, and now we figured out that women can create life without men, right? We can use our own stem cells to create a baby. We don't need men anymore. And it's kind of like mocking, yeah. It's kind of mocking this, um, this like paternal narrative that we need men to further the species. Sorry guys. It's not like a man-hating club. It's just, it is what it is. Um, and we're, I'm gonna see really quick how this relates to kind of your spiritual journey, if that's okay. Not to bring you back to Britney Spears. No, but, please uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was seeing about this, and the reason it came up last night is because I watched Alien, and um, and I know there's like I haven't seen the sequel, but there's like a Prometheus one, I guess, right? Oh, like yeah. So I was asking, who, like, how this related, and I was like explaining who Prometheus was to this person, and if you don't know, like, he was punished by the gods for bringing fire to humans. Um, by having like an eagle, she was looking to like turn up on a cliff and an eagle has to heat out his liver every day for the rest of eternity. And um, I recently read like both Parish by Paris Sultan and Oak of Humanity by Britney Spears. And you know, obviously they think a lot about like this whole archetype of the party girl. And um, like those two in particular, like there's such like pariahs, like mar like not only really martyrs in our culture, but like they are they like have this um they brought this like super fun, bright, sexual, like powerful feminine energy to the culture and they just like get nothing but shit on and yeah. like people just like them like there's a talent like stupid horror. They were called bimbos for it. Yeah. yeah. And like their both like if you read their books, both like those two like they've been through like more trauma than those people like know. Like and I yeah. have traumatized parts, you know, like yeah. those people yeah. have been through all shit and like they've both been like tortured basically in their lives and like victims of sexual assault, the survivors of sexual assault, and all kinds of bullshit and like yet their names are sort of like synonymous with the same joke in our yeah. culture. So, I don't know, that was, that's what I was thinking about. So, yeah. And I still be dead, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this, no, it's valid. <laughs> um, this reading is really beautiful. We got the justice card here, which I feel like, again, is really calling, I've been feeling it a lot lately, that there is a new calling to balance of feminine and masculine power, right? So feminine power has been suppressed for a really long time. And the High Priestess, again, we have this beautiful, feminine, divine energy, the goddess herself. She is, she's all-knowing, she is the power, she is, you know, the, the one who grants us our kind of spiritual abilities. And then you have the Three of Cups, which we also know is this beautiful celebration of womanhood and women dancing together in a field and sharing wine and sharing friendship. And I think that, okay, this is starting to make more sense. The reason Prometheus came up, I feel, is that there is a new fire being brought to womanhood. And I really, really love that. And I think that people like you are the ones who are going to be able to usher us into that. Right? Write our journals. Don't make our journals points of shame anymore, you know? Make them beautiful, like, tellings of womanhood and make other women not ashamed to be what it means to be a woman.
Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at the moon with my bracelets, and I love what you just said. That really, yeah. really sweet. Well, I hope you love it. Thank yeah. you so much for letting me do a ring for you again. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, all right, you're gonna play a tune, and then Caitlin D is gonna read, and then the party is going to be convened. All right, so one tune, go get a drink real fast or don't. And uh, Caitlin, you're up next.
here. All right, so uh, through journals, poems, notes, and reflections, author Caitlin D. traces her journey from heartache and the punk underground scene in Los Angeles, California, to seeking healing everywhere from the mountains of Santa Cruz to the beaches of San Pancho, Mexico. Meditations for Party Girls is a dreamlike guide to contemporary spirituality, outlining a new sort of approach to locating meaning in the modern world, containing 10 plus years of refracted documentation of her adventures, traumas, <laughs> hangovers, hallucinations, breakups, breakdowns, scorpion stings, lovers, animal friends, and survival. D has created a new and powerful map for a voyage towards a radical understanding of the self. One more time, give it up for Caitlin D. Institutionalization. Um, 
Okay, um, so I think like one more long one, or I haven't read any poetry. I should probably read poetry. Um, give me a second, because I'm doing the PDF format because the lighting here is not conducive. Okay, here's a pretty good one. This one's called Stones. I dropped the stone that I've been holding on the ocean floor, step by step for gardens and health, but finally I set it down. And now the sky draws me near to fill my lungs with breath. I cry, tears scrape the salt from my heart, and they melt into the sea, like coming home. I dropped the stone, and now I can breathe. Um, that's that. And then I'm going to read one last thing. This is a little chapter, and it's about the time that I took the sleep venom for no fucking reason in Mexico. Um, this was a time period where I was trying all kinds of stuff, and I didn't, I'm not like a big psychedelic person, but I had, I've been having dreams about doing UFO, and I was working with a company that um, I did a type of practice called craniosacral therapy, but um, one of their practitioners was a UFO practitioner, which basically means she facilitates ceremonies for people. You smoke code venom in a spiritual ceremony with someone, and they walk you through like a therapeutic experience. And it's by the Neo DMT, so it's about 15 minutes of just like, you know, that. Um, I would read that chapter, but that was really long. It's in the book, and in that chapter, the spirit of Johnny Cash told me to move to Nashville, so getting zooted on through that is why I'm here tonight. Um, hey! More about Johnny Cash and him being a bit of a spirit guide for me in the book as well. Um, but this is called Snake Gun, this is different. <laughs> I just think it's a different chapter. This is not that. June 24, 2022, said Pancho Mayori, Mexico. A bald, tattooed man with a raspy voice, conditioned by a steady stream of camel lights, points a flashlight that he's wearing on his forehead at the space on my forearm where he's about to make burns in my skin with what looks like a kebab skewer lit with a torch. I'm surrounded by friends and acquaintances, people who are seeking medicine. Dylan. A charmingly tortured wizard poet from Minnesota whose body is battling MS and epilepsy, who spent much of his adulthood fiercely at odds with his physicality and yet determined to live in beautiful places, and whose perception is trapped outside of his own body. Justin from Calgary, who never wears anything except thin fabric around his waist, and is decorated with jewelry that includes a golden snake that he says it is the sign of his dedication to the cult of Mary Magdalene and Isis. And Michaela, who is a foil of my inner self, eager and trusting, and whose vulnerability brings out a protective rigidness in me, where my own vulnerability might be through if it was a different circumstance. I'm here because I'm hoping that the venom, taken by hand from a wild king cobra snake by this bald man smoking camel lights, whose name I realize I don't remember, will ease the pain that I've had in the right side of my body, the pain that shoots up under my shoulder and spreads through my neck and across my ribs. Not much in work, and I won't quit massage seven months ago now. I was a massage therapist for five years. I've lost interest in pain. So I let this stranger burn little box into diamond shapes under the tattoo of my big pal's name. I let him use a little syringe to place drops of snake venom directly onto my exposed flesh. The burns hurt, but the venom doesn't stain. We have to sit with our palms up and the forearms flat on the table while the venom absorbs. When it absorbs quickly, the snake man says that means the body particularly is in the medicine. Three days in a row, that's the whole dosage, and the effects apparently take time to unfold. So far, I have felt nothing but fatigue and irritability, but I can't blame this on the snake. I'm expecting my period on the moon just tomorrow. I'm sexually frustrated, and I'm overwhelmed because I let my health practices slip. The discipline to wake up and work out, to meditate, to write goals, and to take action towards them. I've been noticing it. I've been smoking weed. I've been watching TV. <laughs> Dylan said that this is the first time since he got sick that he's felt hope. I know how he feels, but I don't think I ever quite got sick. I feel like I was worn down and 
conditioned over time to feel strange and bad and sad and miserable and scared. But now, now I have to feel like I have a future goal to look forward to and to take steps forward. It's not an exclusively grand future. It's one where I might feel like someday I'm not just trying to get through the day. Oh, sorry. I mean, it is an ex I might have a family, a community that cares about me, a job that keeps me happy and comfortable. I'll have my name on spines and books. I'll make art for money. I'll make love to someone who gets chills when they think about me. The third, door, the third dose gets absorbed in the fastest. I don't feel the venom yet, but I can wait. So, um, if you want my book, it's here. It's twenty dollars. If you're not sure yet, I have bookmarks with a QR code, and you can just go buy it privately if that's your thing. Um, and I want to thank National Poetry Party. Thank you guys so much for hosting this. I do. September 26th, so we'd love to see you there. Um, and please consider, uh, oh, there goes the last alert, the, the party's over. Uh, please consider on the table there, uh, not only is there information on one of the parties, there's also some QR codes. Um, uh, we would really love it if you would give us a little cash. If you want this party to keep coming, a little support from you will go a very long way. Um, we, uh, last but not least, uh, we mostly want to say thank you to you guys, okay? You have a lot of things that you can think to do every weekend, every Thursday, and we're absolutely delighted that you decided to come here, and we hope to see you again soon. And that is the party. The party! All right, so that's the party. There's more. We're almost there. See you next month. Are you hungry? Can I get it? Have a great job. Killer job. Thank you. 